Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I want to say welcome. Here on my channel, you'll find all kinds of tips and tutorials for watercolor. And today I'm diving into a topic that I love to talk about, and that is painting techniques for pet portraits. Specifically, I want to show how you can achieve different hair and fur textures with your brushes to capture long, short, and curly hair. So let's dive in. You don't need a lot of different brushes to create a variety of fur textures. I actually paint with a medium to small pointed round synthetic brush for nearly all of my portraits. This helps to simplify the painting process and allows me to get into a better flow rather than switching brushes throughout a whole painting. To paint different styles of hair texture, this will depend on the amount of pressure applied to the brush on the paper. So when it comes to painting long fur, I like to build up layers with long, thin strokes using the point of my brush with very little pressure. When I paint short fur, I use more of the side or the belly of my brush to create a wash, and then once that wash dries, I'll use the wet and dry technique to paint very thin and short strokes of hair in areas on top of that wash. For curly hair, I will use more of the point of my brush in wavy U-shaped strokes making more strokes thicker and some thinner for a more natural look within the hair or the fur. Anytime I paint a dog or a cat, I always paint in the direction that the hair appears on the pet. This helps to give a 3D subject, such as a dog or a cat, dimension and realism. So let me show you real examples of portraits for these different hair and fur textures so I can explain this a little bit more in depth and so you can visualize it a little bit better. So as you can see in my first example of a portrait, I am painting a yellow lab, which is considered more of the short haired breed. So what I'm doing first is painting a wash kind of all over the dog's face. And then I'll start to build up those washes again with more layers as the paint starts to dry. And as that paint dries, then I can start to show a little more of that hair texture or fur texture for this breed and I am now able to show some of that hair in details around the face. So as you'll probably notice, I'm still working with the same pointed round medium size brush for nearly all of this five by seven pet portrait that I'm painting. And like I mentioned earlier, this is to create that flow of a painting that I love to get. You know that feeling when you're like, it's just naturally flowing out of you. And a lot of that for me, comes down to using minimal, minimal supplies. So anyways, as this paint is drying, I am continuing to build up a tiny little strokes, thin strokes in layers, and that's creating the texture on top of those base washes. With this wet and dry technique, you can really start to get a really good amount of detail in the end because you're able to have control over where those brush strokes are for painting short fur and uh, short hair in pet portraits. For this next portrait example, I am painting a golden doodle, which as you know, has that really beautiful wavy to curly hair texture. So like I showed in the beginning of this video, I love to paint with kind of the point and tip of my brush and I paint it in the direction that I see the hair in the, um, the reference photo, but I am painting it in kind of wavy, curly like motions and I'm leaving little bits of the white paper showing in between some of those strokes that's going to give that texture and what you're trying to achieve with that curly and wavy hair texture as you can just see all of the sudden these individual strokes are showing different movement within the hair or the fur so that is something that I just absolutely love to do. And I really, really love painting curly hair and fur. It is so fun. So similar to when I was painting the short fur or hair texture where I created like a base wash and then I let that dry. I am also doing similar to that where I'm kind of painting that base of these curls and these wavy textures. But then once that dries, I can go back and create more dimension by adding more layers in those same uh, motions of the, you know, the U's, the curls, the waves, 
and it just helps to build up that realism and depth that a curl will have because of course some of the hair curls will be lighter from the you know the light hitting it and then some will be darker because they're deeper in the shadows and that's really important to capture when you're painting any type of fur but especially curly uh, pets. And then in the end, one of my favorite things to do is always use the bleed proof white to kind of highlight some of the areas that need extra detail. So I'm just using my really thin uh, brush and painting on those bright white highlights. And my last example here, I am painting a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and it's going to be similar to any type of like long fur uh, pet. So spaniels typically have those long flowy ears. So that's why I'm showing you this example because this dog has the most beautiful flowy wavy ears as you can kind of see in the reference photo on the right, um, a little peek of it. But anyway, so similar to painting the curly haired dog, I'm using thin and thick uh, strokes, but painting them longer and not quite as curly or wavy. So this creates the long illusion of the hair, but again, painting it always in the direction that the hair appears within the reference. As you can see in the face here, it's shorter hair, so I am going back to that approach of painting a wash down first, and then later I will build up the color of those little uh, strokes. Or in the ears, I am now building up the darker layers to create that dimension again, similar to when we were painting a curly uh, hair dog. And so it's a lot of this is going to the principles can apply to all different dogs. It's just truly the length and the pressure that you apply with your brush. And as you can see, again, I'm still using a pointed round medium sized brush for a lot of these paintings. It's just truly the angle that I'm holding the brush and the amount of paint and pressure that I'm applying onto the paper. What I would recommend is to get just a few key brushes. So as you see here, I am painting with my really detailed brush here and there, and that's the triple zero pointed round brush or liner brush. That's really helpful for painting anything that's like whiskers or just really tiny hairs that you do see happen throughout the face. You can then jump back to your medium sized brush and you're not having to pick up a ton of different brushes. You know, it just makes it a lot less intimidating in my opinion. So as this portrait comes to life, allowing some of the white paper to show behind or in, in between those strokes. So it creates more of that dimension and texture that hair and fur pets need. So in the end, I love using just a couple of small to medium pointed round brushes that have a nice snap to the bristles. The bristles on my brushes aren't super soft, so I can get that control in spraying when painting thin strokes and details. And to achieve different fur textures from short to curly to long or to wavy, it really just depends on the amount of pressure, how thin or thick of strokes you're, you're creating, and the length and the direction of the strokes. So I really hope you found this video helpful when painting pet portraits. If you're in the beginner stages to painting pet portraits and are looking for more tips, I put together a complete beginner's guide to watercolor pet portraits that you can download for free in the description below this video. Thanks so much for being here and I'm so grateful that you took the time to watch my video and I hope you'll subscribe for future videos. And until next time, happy painting.